It is the voice of Indiana County WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Our conversation with Brian Levy today brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. He's from Dallas, Texas. He's a senior care specialist with Cambridge Caregivers and Manchester Care Homes. And I thought the perfect guy to talk to about this topic because we're feeling it all across Indiana County, just as everybody else here in western Pennsylvania is. When can we finally get indoors to our nursing homes, long care homes, personal care homes, and visit mom and dad, our elderly relatives? And uh, Brian, let's talk about that a little bit. This has been a really rough year for a lot of people, and especially we think of those folks, right? It sure has, and and isolation is real. Um, we see the effects of it from, from day one. Uh, we are grateful that Governor Abbott and the Texas Health and Human Services has finally released uh, uh, loosened up regulations and are allowing people back into nursing homes. Our four care homes uh, have been COVID free for, uh, for, for, for the entire duration. And, um, you know, with PPE and the proper measures in place, we can do this. This is what we do best. One of the interesting things to me has been this debate outside of the um, of the homes uh, about people who have the vaccine and uh, consider themselves to now be um, uh, super shielded. Uh, can't get it, can't give it. Um, is that the case? Uh, yes and no. You know, the, the vaccine is at 100 uh, percent foolproof, um, but it, but it's a definite measure. And with the vaccine, we have all of our residents vaccinated. About 75% of our staff have been vaccinated, and, and then we started to get families vaccinated. So with fa- vaccinations, hand sanitizer, uh, masks, um, you know, just people being conscious and, and, yeah. and being human beings and understanding. I mean, look, we're adults. We know when we're sick, and we know where we should go and where we shouldn't. So um, let us do what we do best, and they heard us, and, and here we are. Here in Pennsylvania, the horrible decision was made last spring to go ahead and put COVID patients back into their personal care homes, their nursing homes, and it had a devastating impact. Um, My mother is in a home here in Indiana, and um, she had COVID, uh, and she's had the vaccine. So they've really been through it, um, and protection of, of the residents of these homes really has to be the number one priority, right? Absolutely. Um, ownership on our end at Manchester Care Homes made a decision from day one. As people passed in our care homes, we would not move in new residents until we were, we were absolutely positive that we could do so safely. So up until about a, two months ago, a month ago, um, we, we were not even giving tours. Um, and, and now we're, we're screening families and doing um, a lot of due diligence before we let people back in. And in- slowly but surely, we're adding uh, people. But keeping our current resident base safe uh, was a number one priority. And and you've done it right. You've been COVID free the entire time within the homes. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Real proud of it. I mean, uh, kudos to our medical staff. Kudos to the caregivers. Kudos to ownership. Um, it was a team effort. But again, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. We understand PPE. We understand hand sanitizer. We understand. Um, keeping our residents safe. Well, one of the and things, healthy. one of the things, of course, uh, that um, we need to understand is that the the folks in who operate these homes, such as yours, um, it has to be their number one priority, and it has been all along. But there have to be some things that we can do as the folks who want to get in to see our families uh, that can can help that effort. So, what are some of the things that we should be aware of? Uh, for for one, get, get vaccinated. Find a way to get vaccinated. Um, I understand that it's becoming easier. Uh, it was it was tough at first all across the country, um, but now that there's more vaccine vaccines available, get vaccinated. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Use common sense, and um, pay attention to what you're doing and go visit your loved ones. Yeah. Well, that and. The first of all, the home opening up to allow that to happen is one of the first things that has For to sure. happen. But uh, and and we understand that everybody is doing their best to keep keep those residents safe. Um, the people who work there within those homes, um, they have a tremendous amount of pressure on them, don't they? Huge, absolutely. I mean, they are they're they're the front line. They are the ones that are you know that are caring for, feeding, changing. Um, they're face-to-face with our residents day in and day out. 
and they take a, it's a huge responsibility, and they take it seriously. Obviously, um, <clears throat> they become family members. Um, uh, they're like surrogate family members. Yeah. Well. Uh, and of course, they do FaceTime and use technology to keep families um, engaged. But at the end of the day, families need families. And there's nothing like the human touch of a, a loved one holding your hand or just hearing their voice. And when we care for residents with high acuity and high care needs that really don't understand why is this person in front of me all of a sudden have a mask on and who are they? Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it can be confusing and scary. Yeah, that um, even, that so even... to, to allow families back in the homes is, is just we're, we're grateful. Governor Abbott and, and the state of Texas, they listened. And here we are. The emotional toll, we have heard about it uh, from any number of aspects, from people who are working from home now, from kids in their school situations. Uh, but this is a really tough one because we are forced to be separated from our loved ones. And uh, while we, uh, who are not those ones who are being cared for, uh, have our own emotional issues uh, dealing with this, so certainly within that, as, as you just said, um, their their capacities are reduced. Their capacities uh, both physically and emotionally are reduced, and uh, we really need to get in to see them, don't we? Absolutely. Isolation is real, and um, and uh, fa- families need families. Yeah. Is this going to be something that is will be a, a gradual type of thing? Or do we ever get back to the point where we can uh, ease up a little bit and and uh, go back to the way that we were just? Stop in and visit mom or dad at the nursing home? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Um, look, it's a learning process. I mean, look at, look at where we are today compared to where we were 12 months ago. We're, we're learning as we're going. And if we can take those findings and apply them, I think we'll all be better off. Will we ever go back to the way we were? I'm going to venture to say no. We can try to put measures in place. But quite honestly, I think we will always monitor visitors more so than we ever have. Um, ask a lot of hard questions, take temperature, uh, hand sanitize, and and as far as masks go, um, we'll see. But I don't see us um, uh, pulling the masks off anytime soon uh, with with visitors and with our staff. This has really taught us to uh, respect the power of a virus, hasn't it? Uh, no doubt. It's 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 uh, it's dangerous. It's a real thing. He is Brian Levy. He's a senior care specialist. Brian, uh, you've eased our concerns a little bit here today. And, uh, well, one day we, we hope that we can get to a more normal situation, but we're just going to have to define what that is. We appreciate your time, though, today. Thanks for having me on. We appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care.